Hello, hello, welcome to another episode of History in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous Patreons, my British Rail Critics, and of course, my underwater train finders, Thomas Ward and Lord Captain Von Thrust III. You are the reason why this content remains combustible. Please do not set my content on fire. That would be bad. Anyway, today we're going to talk about another historical steam something. But it's not a rail-based locomotive, it's not a boat, it's not anything like that. Today is a steam-powered road vehicle. This is the story of the fate of Richard Trevithick's Puffing Devil. Richard Trevithick, whose name I am hopefully not horribly butchering, was born on the 13th of April in 1771. He was a mining engineer by trade, but even in his youth, he was known to have a sharp mind. Apparently, his school teacher hated him because he would always find ways to solve the problems he was given differently than the way his teacher wanted him to do them. But he always wound up with the right answer anyway. And it just sounds like the teacher was just being a jerk, if you're asking my opinion, because regardless of how he got there, Richard was clearly an intelligent man. Now, Traumathic had a fascination with steam engines at a young age, and when he started his work in the mining industry, he pioneered the use of high-pressure steam. In between actually working, he would tinker on his own, trying to come up with new ways to utilize this new technology. And eventually, in 1801, he would construct one of the earliest steam road vehicles, which he dubbed the Puffing Devil. On Christmas Eve that same year, he demonstrated it successfully by carrying six passengers to the delight of people around. The Puffing Devil was interesting, but to be realistic, it actually wasn't very good. Even when it was working, it wasn't able to maintain sufficient steam pressure over long periods, so revenue service was probably out of the question. Trevithick still wanted to keep working on it though, as he felt the technology had potential, as many people did. But unfortunately, the Puffing Devil itself would not last very long. During further tests, the locomotive wound up breaking down after it passed over a gully in the road. It was put under some shelter, and the operators decided to retire to a nearby pub where they apparently had a meal of roast goose and just a whole mess of drinks. Thing was, they left the fire burning inside the locomotive. Now, when this first was suggested to me, I was told that this locomotive actually exploded, but based on all the reliable sources we able to turn up, that's actually not the case. The Puffing Devil did not detonate. That's not what occurred, though it was still destroyed. What happened was, as the fire was not doused, the water inside the locomotive was allowed to burn off. With no water to keep the metal at a reasonable temperature, and the fire still going, the locomotive actually wound up catching a blaze, which sadly destroyed it. Trevithick, to his credit, was not deterred. He didn't view the situation as a serious setback, because he, and I agree with him, felt what happened was an operator error, and not necessarily any fault with the Puffing Devil itself. It had enough issues, but this wasn't one of them. Trevithick had a fixation on high-pressure steam, and it would eventually prove his undoing, but not before Trevithick would get his chance to make another road-based steam vehicle. He called it the London Steam Carriage, and in 1803, he actually drove it himself in London from Holborn to Paddington and back again. Unfortunately, the creation wound up being very uncomfortable for passengers, and it wound up being more expensive than a horse-drawn carriage. So it was ultimately abandoned, and Trevithick never made another one. At least not a road vehicle. He did produce several other engines, a couple of which ran on rails, and one was meant to drive a hammer at the Penny Darren Ironworks. But in 1803, there was an accident. One of Trevithick's stationary pumping engines that was being used wound up exploding, killing four men. Trevithick himself considered the explosion to be caused by a careless operator, rather than a design fault, but the incident was exploited by people like James Watt and Matthew Bolton, both competitors of Trevithick's designs and promoters of low-pressure steam engines, something that Trevithick didn't utilize. He was an early proponent of high-pressure steam. Trevithick still invented after this, but his luck would continue taking a turn for the worse. Eventually, he and his family wound up destitute, and sadly he died penniless and in relative obscurity. It's a shame because it's clear that Trevithick may have been onto something with his early creations. He was a smart person. Experiments with high-pressure steam carried on even after his death, although nothing really turned up from it because, again, everyone just felt it was too dangerous to be worth it. 
On the plus side, there is a replica of Trevithick's Puffing Devil, which was built by the Trevithick Society. They're a non-profit charity organization, and the purpose is education, which is something I can respect. And seeing a recreation of the Puffing Devil, despite the faults with it, I think Richard Trevithick would be happy to know that his legacy still lives on somewhere. Till next time, this is Darkness, and a bit well fond farewell.